Right now, an arrest that caught many off guard. A former local school bus driver taken into custody, accused of inappropriately touching several young girls. Plus, from a refugee to graduate, we are looking ahead to commencement weekend, sharing how one student's achieving his dream of becoming a doctor. Plus, making something new out of something old. How a Janesville man is breathing new life into parts of the old General Motors plant. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. And thanks for joining us tonight. A Partyville man is being charged with sexually assaulting girls while working as a bus driver for the village school district. Jamie Perez spoke with the district superintendent this afternoon who said he had no idea this was going on until he read about it in the paper. 74-year-old Gary Edwards is facing two counts of first-degree sexual assault. In May of 2017, an 11-year-old girl told a Columbia County deputy that Edwards touched her on the butt and is always trying to hug girls on the bus. Fast forward to January of this year. Two more girls reported Edwards to the sheriff's department, saying he put his arms around their stomachs, let them sit in his lap, and placed his hands around their private areas. According to the criminal complaint, Edwards told detectives it's possible he may have done so as they were getting out of his seat and his hands were around their waist if his hands slipped. Columbia County sheriffs were not available to give an on-camera statement today, but we did speak with the superintendent about this. He said this is all news to him. We had no idea there was an investigation going on. We had no idea there was arrest made. We had, I mean, what would I tell parents? I have nothing that I, I had nothing to, to tell them until I read the paper this morning. Superintendent Gus Knitt said he heard about the 2017 incident from the principal at the elementary school, but nothing came of it. A mother complain in 2017 about a situation. Uh, we've referred that to the, pol to the sheriff's department. They investigated it and said that there was no, no basis for the complaint. Edwards would remain employed by Smith's Bus Service, the company the school contracts with. We expressed our concern to Smith Bus about things that we had heard. Within a day or so after that, the driver was no longer driving. Edwards reportedly retired back in December. Then in January of this year, new allegations emerged. Knitt said when they asked the girls who filed the new complaints what happened. The elementary principal investigated. She talked to two girls whose names surfaced. They told us that um, know that nothing had been going on. Knitt said it wasn't until he saw Edwards' mugshot in the news that he heard the full story. Smith's bus service declined to comment on this, but Knitt said it's his goal to work with the company to find out more about why Edwards was still employed after several allegations surfaced. Safety of the, our students is, is number one concern. In Partyville, Jamie Perez, News 3 Now. Edwards is scheduled for his next court hearing on June 25th, and if he is convicted, he faces a maximum of 120 years in prison. A Janesville man is being held on a $5,000 cash bond tonight after making his first court appearance after a deadly crash over the weekend. Today, Thomas Bloom was charged with homicide by intoxicated use of a vehicle. He is accused of killing the passenger in his vehicle after driving drunk the wrong way on Highway 14. Criminal complaint says his blood alcohol content was more than twice the legal limit. The driver of the other car was also taken to the hospital with injuries. An officer involved shooting this morning in Milwaukee leaves one man dead, another behind bars. Police Chief Alfonso Morales said at about 940, plainclothes officers were conducting surveillance for a murder suspect when two people approached the officer's unmarked vehicle with their faces covered. One had a weapon. Morales said officers believed they were about to be robbed. The armed suspect was then shot and killed. A second suspect ran but was taken into custody after a short chase. Police are still searching for that murder suspect. All right, let's turn it over to the weather office now. Meteorologist Dana Fulton has the look at our first alert forecast. Dana, some showers moving back in, huh? Unfortunately, just knocking on the door for us right now. This evening, pretty quiet outside, actually, if you get to step outside and enjoy a little bit of sunshine as we still have just about a two and a half more hours before sunset. Clear sky right now towards Platteville. This is a look from our Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. Visible cloud track has those clouds in the morning. And then, of course, we've had a little bit of breaking up with those clouds in the last few hours. To the south, though, they're still seeing a thick cloud deck over northern Illinois. Nothing, nothing coming in on our uh, Doppler track right now, but they're starting to form up. Those showers are starting to pop up to the southwest, and they're going to continue to swing northeast, and they'll be crossing in as we head into your Wednesday morning. Right now, it's about 55 in Madison and Janesville, so we've already started to drop just a little bit from our afternoon highs. There's a bit of a breeze coming from the northeast, 
about 13 miles per hour in Madison and in Lone Rock. It'll be a little breezy tonight, but our sky will stay uh, partly cloudy, at least for the next few hours, or partly sunny, I should say. In the mid-50s for a little bit, we'll be at about 53 by 8 o'clock. By 10, though, we're in the upper 40s, and we will not hop out of the 40s throughout Wednesday and most of Thursday. We'll take a closer look at what's ahead for the next few days and our rain chances coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Dana, thanks so much. A popular bar in Oshkosh has been destroyed in a fire overnight. This is at the intersection of Main Street and Irving Avenue. Mabel Murphy's is a local landmark there. The fire did affect two different buildings, including a neighboring apartment complex. Authorities are still investigating how this started, but believe it may have started in that apartment building. Everyone did get out safely. For one soon to be UW Medical School graduate, getting his degree has been a long road. He was a refugee for more than 19 years. And despite coming to the U.S. with barriers stacked against him, he is achieving his dream of becoming a doctor. Our Amanda Quintana joins us now with his story, Amanda. Yes, well, for a long time, Manu Habibi has been trying to find his place in the world. He was born in Afghanistan, but after moving with his parents to Uzbekistan at age two, the Taliban invaded his home country and his family became refugees for 19 years. When they resettled in the U.S., he wanted to become a doctor, but was way behind his peers who had AP classes and research experience. He had to work even harder to get to where he is now. To somehow achieve something that will encourage other children uh, who are also immigrants or refugees coming to the United States who most, mostly by default they pursue this track of working, going into workforce and never pursuing any higher education. He will graduate this week and will stay here to continue an anesthesiology residency at UW Health. He says for a long time he didn't know where he belonged, but he has found a new home here in Madison. He is passionate about helping the elderly population dealing with chronic pain. Well, we wish him nothing but the best. It is yeah. quite a story. Congrats yeah. to all those graduates on Friday and Saturday. Should be a special weekend on mm -hmm. campus. Amanda, thank you. Republican U.S. Representative Sean Duffy and his wife Rachel are expecting their ninth child. He posted late last night on his official U.S. House website that the baby is coming in the fall. He goes on to write that he and his wife aren't crazy. <laughs> he says just full of hope for the country's future. The Republican has represented the 7th District in Northwestern and Central Wisconsin since 2011. That is the state's largest geographical congressional district covering all or parts of 20 counties. If your family's doctors are in the Marshfield Clinic Health System or the Gunderson Health System, those two organizations could soon be merging. The two announced today they will spend the coming months working out details that would create a health system with more than 2,000 clinicians and more than 18,000 employees. They say that will enhance the level of care across Wisconsin, Northeast Iowa, and Southeastern Minnesota. A hospital in Platteville is warning people about a new scam that's being sent directly to people's cell phones. Southwest Health says the scammer sends a text saying that a relative is in the hospital. Officials with the hospital said Southwest Health will not message you about an ill family member. The hospital suggested if you do receive one of these texts, just delete it and do not click the link or reply to that text. People in Rock County will soon be able to hold a piece of Janesville history. On Saturday, thousands got bricks from the former General Motors plant there, but one man says he wants to do more. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter now from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with what that man is doing, Adam. Well, Danica and Eric, for decades, the Janesville General Motors plant was home to American ingenuity, building things from scratch by hand. While the plant is now gone, one man aims to keep that legacy alive. The biggest part of Janesville is from GM. Every man on the street drove down the road in his GM at 6.30 in the morning to go to work. Chris Wells is up to something special at his workshop in Janesville. I've been a carpenter basically my whole life. Where he's working to save a piece of the historic General Motors plant. Everybody that went through those main doors walked through that two-story foyer. The best way he knows how. He wanted something to be useful, but also was a piece of that history. One at a time all by hand. Not bad, this is gonna be the first, first GM clock made. 
For years, Chris and his father Al built clocks together. And this was our first shop, was a barn on Beloit Avenue. Using everything from wooden pews at old churches to the wooden bleachers at Camp Randall. We, we did a lot of clocks out of that old barn down there. But this project, a solo mission. 83 years old, Al Wells passed away at home. And yeah, yeah, dad's always, yeah, close by. A chance for this carpenter to make something meaningful out of the rubble. We're still just trying to provide people with a piece of that building, uh, a part of it. And well, says he got the wood for these clocks from the main foyer of the entranceway of the General Motors plant. He says he'll plan on building 3,000 of these clocks or <laughs> however many he can build until the wood runs out. But he does say the first 100 will be ready and on his website by the beginning of next month. Yeah, a lot of history down there. He's going to be working hard mm -hmm. on that. Adam Ducks are reporting. <laughs> all by himself. Uh, all by himself <laughs> all in by our himself. Rock County Bureau. Adam, thank you. Still to come tonight, we'll introduce you to some of our brand new BU ambassadors. Plus, an ongoing campaign inside Madison schools getting kids to think healthy. Stay with us. Hi there, Danica Lewis here in the lobby of News 3 Now, and we are welcoming our BU ambassadors today. This is very exciting. Each of them are going home with one of these. These are kits that have all sorts of materials to help them spread this message of helping kids be themselves and be confident in it. It is very exciting. We got everyone from teachers to coaches to troop leaders, you name it, even a professional clown in the mix. Again, all spreading this message of be you with the kids and teens in our community. And one of our special guests today, and one of our special ambassadors is Michelle Jensen. She is the principal over at Prairie View Middle School in Sun Prairie. And the BU message is something her staff has been sharing all year long. We can't stop sending that message because our kids need to hear that it's okay to be who they want to be. They need to hear that every day, multiple times a day for it to really sink in. Principal Jensen's sixth and seventh graders have been working with the theme, this is me, this is we, this is us. It fits right into what we're doing here at News 3 Now with the help of our partners at SSM Health. It's been incorporated into assemblies, posters, lining the hallways, and you're seeing some videos here as well. Jensen promises parents your kids are listening, but it is crucial to be consistent, maybe even overkill 
when reinforcing this be you mindset. So again, with the help of our partners at SSM Health, we have been welcoming these BU ambassadors here. We have about 35 of them who have committed to this message and we're helping them out with some of these resources. Again, all these goodies inside the bags to help really physically show this be you message and that they can work on being uniquely themselves and be proud of that, right? So we will continue to share these be you stories and Eric, if anybody out there has any BU stories themselves, we want to hear them. So send them our way via social media, email, whatever it takes. Hashtag BU. Love it. Danica, thank you very much. The city is breaking ground today for a new $25 million, 112 unit affordable housing development. It'll be going up at the former location of the Penny Library on Cottage Grove Road. 95 of the 112 units will be designated for individuals and families earning no more than 60% of the county's median income. City of Madison continuing its initiative to get kids to drink more water. It's called the Got Water Campaign, a partnership between the Madison Water Utility and the school district helping fund new hydration stations at schools. After this school year, more than 11,000 children in 21 elementary schools and four middle schools will have access to the water bottle refilling stations due to that program. Still to come tonight ahead in sports, the series back to Milwaukee, a preview of tomorrow night's game five between the Bucks and the Celtics. But first, an alert day in the forecast. Dana will have the details when we return. Stay with us. Really not too bad outside right now as we take a live look actually just outside the station. We have a little blue in the sky, a few thin high hazy clouds for us, uh, but we're also getting just a little bit of sunshine. So that's not too bad of an evening uh, heading into tomorrow. We're going to be wishing that we had a little sunshine around temperature wise. We hit 57 today. Now our average is in the mid 60s, so we're a little below average. Uh, but again, with the sun, it really wasn't too bad outside. Our Doppler track is pretty quiet, but we do have some showers starting to form to the southwest. We're going to wait a few more hours, though, before those showers really start to move in our direction. High pressure off to the northeast has kept us fairly quiet today. We still have an easterly breeze for us through the next few hours. That is just a little breezy outside. Those wind speeds about 6 to 12 miles per hour. This stationary front down to the south is really going to serve as the road for our next area of low pressure. It's just going to follow it as it tracks northeast, bringing showers throughout the plains in the northern Midwest. That rainfall 
It's coming into an area, of course, that's already pretty saturated. We could be dealing with a few isolated flooding concerns heading into your Wednesday night and by Thursday morning because a lot of rain will be sliding through. In fact, by tomorrow morning, we start to see scattered showers entering in the western edge of the state first. And we'll continue to see those scattered showers throughout the afternoon. We may have some heavier rainfall at times. We also may hear a few thunderstorms out there, especially later in the evening. Now, by Thursday morning, we do still have rain. Our showers will start to end later in the day on Thursday. Skies are still mostly cloudy, and by Friday, We'll watch our skies steadily clear. We'll gradually become partly sunny by Friday afternoon. Our severe potentials really favored south, but we're still under a marginal risk for severe weather tomorrow in southern Wisconsin. Our concerns uh, could see some very strong wind gusts and again that isolated flooding threat for us. And by Thursday, that threat shifts southeast, so we aren't looking at any severe potential with the storm chances that could pop up for Thursday, mainly in the morning with those showers coming through Thursday. By tomorrow morning, especially if you're in the southwest corner of the state, keep the umbrella on hand, and then everybody likely going to need it in the afternoon. Afternoon. We may have a stronger line of storms come through later in the evening also, uh, but notice temperatures throughout the day will stay quite cool outside. By Thursday morning, we still have a few scattered showers, a mostly cloudy sky expected throughout the day on Thursday, and temperatures will be just a little better on Thursday in the upper 50s. Rainfall totals will be the highest north and west of Madison. La Crosse could see over three inches for some areas around there, hovering close to about two and a quarter around La Crosse. Now in Dane County, we're looking at anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half coming through. Most most of it on Wednesday, some of it coming through on Thursday, and then we'll dry up by Friday morning. We do have an alert day in the forecast for Wednesday because it is going to be so windy, so chilly, and so rainy outside. Up again, isolated areas could see two inches of rainfall in Dane County. Overnight will fall to about 40. Tomorrow we barely climb to 45. Our temps are not going to move around all too much, but we will be in the middle to upper 50s for Thursday and for Friday. Sunshine returns for Friday. By Saturday and Sunday, we're back to the low 60s. We'll have partly sunny skies for Saturday and Sunday, but we will also have a slight shower chance for both days. That's a quick look at your forecast. Well, Mother Nature was not kind to the Big Ten softball tournament last year. The Badgers hoping there won't be a repeat performance. We'll show you why next in sports.
Well, if you remember to last year's Big Ten softball tournament, it was here in Madison. And well, there was a lot of rain, so much so that Barry Alvarez had a helicopter fly in to dry the field at Goodman Diamond. And this year, well, the tournament's at Indiana, and there's an 80% chance of thunderstorms that day in Bloomington. Head coach Yvette Healy is glad they're the first game of the day on Thursday so they can stick to their routine. We know from flying out of Madison and Milwaukee all winter long that flights get delayed later in the day and tournaments are exactly the same thing. If you've got the first game of the day, you're going to start on time. Um, we're a team that really likes that schedule, so we know how to get up and watch our film and get breakfast and some of us will get some runs in in the morning for good luck. And uh, yeah, but if I could write it up, that's exactly how I would actually pencil it in. Some off-season basketball news. Badger forward Taylor Curry will transfer from Wisconsin. He'll return home to Michigan and play at Mott Community College in Flint. He redshirted this past season his freshman year. He's now the second Wisconsin player to leave the program in the last two months. Ty Strickland left in March and committed to play at Temple. Wisconsin now has nine scholarship players on its roster. So, to the Bucks now, will we see Malcolm Brogdon or not in this series? Well, as of today, head coach Mike Budenholzer says he's quote-unquote still evaluating. Even without the Prez, I think you can call these last two wins at TD Garden, Garden statement wins. And a big part of that, the bench breaking Boston's will. George Hill to the rescue last night with Giannis in some foul trouble. Hill with his third straight game in double digits. And Pat Connaughton ranking fourth on the team in minutes played in the postseason, putting up some big plays on both sides of the ball. Giannis leading everyone in every game in points in this series. So last night, a reporter from Boston asked him how he would defend himself. And psh, Giannis not about to give away any secrets. Oh, man. I don't know. You know, uh, I, I really don't know. I'll probably you know, try to be uh, fit, as physical as you can get. And uh, that's what Boston, Boston uh, the players have been doing the whole series. Um, and at the end of the day, they got to let me shoot jump shot. And that's what they've been doing so far. So I really don't know what to say. A plus answer there, Giannis. A plus. So game five tomorrow night at seven of five store form. If games six and seven are necessary, they would be split between TD Garden and Pfizer Forum. The Brewers hoping to keep the wins rolling in after taking advantage of some mistakes from the Nationals last night. Adrian Hazard will start on the mound for the Brewers tonight. Nationals will go to Steven Strasburg, who last Thursday became the fastest pitcher to rack up 1,500 career strikeouts. It took him 1,272 and a third innings in 10 seasons, guys. The answer is you cannot defend Giannis, No, right? that, that was the perfect <laughs> answer. He just said what they were doing so far. They haven't been successful, too. So there you go. There's your answer. Yeah, they tried. It's, yeah. it's, it's not, not working. Just, you, no, you just can't do nope. it. You no. can't do it. Dana? So we are looking at rain chances coming in tomorrow, guys. So we do have an alert day in the forecast for Wednesday. The rest of your evening looks dry and pretty quiet, but overnight our skies are going to become mostly cloudy. By Wednesday, we have showers through most of the day and the chance for a few isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. We do have a marginal risk for severe weather, so we will be keeping a very close eye to the skies throughout Wednesday afternoon and evening. By Thursday, temperatures will be just a little better. We'll be in the mid-50s for afternoon highs, but we still have that rain chance mainly in the morning. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that'll bring the sun back into the area for us. So temperatures upper 50s for Friday, but low 60s by Saturday and Sunday. All right, Dana, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 6.